Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Basement Binge, and welcome to those of you who are viewing this on YouTube. The long time since I've done a video episode, but hello. Um, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Wow, I'm excited to review this. It is also just exciting to be reviewing movies again. It's been a long time since I've been able to review an episode with a new job and school finishing and those types of things. But nonetheless, we're not here for that. We are here to talk about Tom Cruise's new movie, the next entering this Mission Impossible franchise, and to help you decide if it is worth the watch, if you should go see this film in theaters. We'll get into all of that completely spoiler-free with a very first segment, Two Cents, which is my immediate reaction, kind of initial thoughts about the film. And I have to say, Mission Impossible is one of my favorite franchises. I've, I've been in love with it since 2021, <laughs> which isn't very long. That was the first time that I'd ever seen them, which feels more recent than it is now that I say 2021, but when I did finally see them, I, I had bought the Blu-ray collection that's on my shelf back here, and I was intentionally saving it for the podcast, but I was so excited to watch them that one day I just sat down and watched them, even though I wasn't going to review them for the podcast, and I was just floored by them completely. Fell in love. Um, not to pander to Tom Cruise's ego too much, which I have no problem doing, but they really put life into movies. I mean, just thinking about watching a Mission Impossible movie excites me. As I thought about, planned, and hopefully, which I wasn't able to do, to review these other films, I was excited to have a chance to watch them. As the day came around to see this film, I was excited. I'm going to see a new Mission Impossible movie, and just that alone was extremely exciting. To say that I was looking forward to Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning is an extreme understatement. I still remember when the trailer came out. I have a reaction to it on my TikTok page. I was thrilled with a new Mission Impossible movie. So, to say that I was excited for Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning is an extreme understatement. It, it seriously was a film that I was looking forward to anxiously, and I couldn't believe I was finally sitting down to watch it. A little bit of like surreal feeling. Oh, it's finally here. We're watching it. So that love for something makes it hard to not be nervous when you go to get more of it, right? This is a new film, and I was nervous it was going to happen. And McHugh, the director, Christopher McQuarrie, he goes by, by McHugh, uh, he does something interesting with the opening of the film to let you kind of linger in those nerves longer than I would have anticipated. You have to think about what you think about a Mission Impossible movie while you start to watch the new Mission Impossible movie. It's it's interesting, and I can't really explain why. Maybe that was just my experience, but it was very interesting to sit there and think, why am I nervous? What am, As this Mission Impossible movie starts, what does it mean to be a Mission Impossible movie to me? And am I, am I about to get it? And... It doesn't initially get into the mission impossibleness of it. It starts, at least from what I can remember, kind of in a different way. I mean, it starts with a MacGuffin. They all do, but it, it's it's different, and you feel that. And so then you feel yourself thinking about Mission Impossible in an exciting way. But then it slowly starts running, and you just get enough of what's at risk here for it to be threatening, and then you're on to the next thing, constantly on the edge of your seat as far as anticipating what's going to happen and and not just because Tom Cruise is jumping a motorcycle off a cliff into a base jump or driving a yellow Fiat in Rome like Fast X wishes they could it's those things are great those action sequences are wonderful but the insane set pieces are moments that you actually catch your breath those are the moments that the marketing has prepared you for those are the moments that you feel almost a little bit more comfortable in because everything else is a surprise. Everything else is new, and the threats feel real, but none of it feels cheated. None of it feels cheap. You feel the weight of it, as you should, while you're also having fun with the action set pieces that they have in there that, just to talk about them for a brief moment, are really, really well done. I will say that there's one particular action set piece, particularly, it's in the trailers. There's a fight in an alleyway. Didn't love that. It just didn't really work the way that I was anticipating it. Um, but besides that, the action set pieces are actually really great. So the threat here, the thing that they're going against, the entity, as it is called in this film, it's new. It's strange. It's something that I didn't... I, I mean, I gave no thought to who the threat in the new film was going to be, but I didn't think it would be this and this way. And and the more that the film went on, at first I was like, oh, this is kind of weird. It feels, 
you know, kind of doomsday-ish, like they're trying to make more out of something than is actually there, but then you really start to feel the reality of it. And even when you don't totally understand the rules of this game that you're watching, you feel the risk, and you're surprisingly having a lot of fun doing so. I have some small complaints here, but there isn't a moment, and I'll get to those complaints in a second, but there isn't a moment that the plot doesn't work for me. The plot always is connecting with me. Ethan Hunt is being challenged, and you have to deal with those emotional challenges and the stress that that brings while you watch the film. That's what's hard, is the emotional, psychological part of this battle that they have against this entity. And the ferocious intensity is mixed with brilliant humor and a lot of fun. Even when you're worried about Ethan catching to someone or escaping or whatever else is going to happen, you're having fun with the circumstances of the whole thing. Tom Cruise, the producer, cares about Mission Impossible being enjoyable and about it being funny. And he knows how to make it funny. Me and the entire theater were really laughing. There's a lot of great moments in this that they're, they're not quips like the MCU. They're just, it's just sincerely funny. And part of that is just acknowledging the absurdity of what you're watching and the circumstances of it. And also just characters being themselves and just getting humor out of a character being themselves in a, in a realistic, authentic way. In particular, the fiat scene in Rome, the yellow fiat, I was dying laughing at it. The, the, it. That scene had me rolling. One of the few that I just could not stop laughing at. It was a lot of fun. And then these characters that we love, they are just who we love. They're, they are being who we love, and they deliver that, and it is great. Uh, once again, Ving Rhames comes in with this chocolatey voice to say things that need to be said that you didn't know could be said so well. And there's some, you know, for an exposition, for an expositionally heavy film, Ving Grames, who has to do a lot of that, shines every time he says something in this one particular scene to Ethan, where he really kind of talks about the consequences of Ethan's choices. It's, you feel it. Um, it's, it's really amazing. And then the music, Lauren Balfe, holy smokes, he is phenomenal. And McHugh lets him have the show and have the stage completely in some of the scenes. And it's something that I never knew I wanted so much in a Mission Impossible movie. But after one or two scenes of that, I was like, wow, that was great. Can we have another one of those? And you really kind of look back. And it's interesting, as you're watching the movie, you look back and think about how much you enjoy what came before. And it's really exciting and really fun. Now, to get to my complaints as we wrap up Two Cents here, again, completely spoiler-free, my complaint is, well, first let me say this. After just one watch, this will not beat my current favorite in the Mission Impossible series, Fallout. That is one of my all-time favorite movies ever and my favorite in the franchise. And I didn't expect this to be better than that. I, I love that film, but I'm not sure where this sits in the rest of the films, and part of that is because at times I wish that the consequences were more threatening to the IMF team and to Ethan Hunt. And the film tries to give you reasons for that, which the reasoning is sound and realistic and fits the story, but it just feels that right... It, it feels that what would be right, what the right consequences would be, aren't there. And, and part of that gives you like this weird feeling of doom that the entity brings and that's a benefit of the film is you feel an uncertainty you don't know what you're supposed to believe and what you're not you know what is being twisted and what is not which is part of the confusion and the intrigue but at least just kind of in your gut feeling there's moments where their actions both like in their physical circumstances and also in the technology they they use the consequences of their actions and the and the the circumstances and reality of the threat should be worse things should be harder and they seem to get off easier more frequently than i would like to see and again that could just be personal preference and i don't know how much of that is just just a sincere misstep or what the entity wants me to think to be a little bit meta with the film but but that's a very, very minor complaint because, like I said, the plot works for me consistently. The action scenes are fantastic. The music, the characters, it's all just Mission Impossible, and it's delivering really, really good Mission Impossible. That is going to wrap up two cents here. No announcements here besides, I apologize it's been so long. More episodes are coming more consistently. Again, if you're not watching this on YouTube, that's okay. This will always be in audio form, but if you want to watch it, 
hello, anyone watching on YouTube. If you would like more video reviews like this one, leave a like on this episode on YouTube, and I'll get more of them, and maybe we'll get more creative and, and more dynamic with them, but we're keeping it simple for now, as I'm just trying to get episodes out. Anyway, let's move it along right to the next segment, Watch Worthiness. The- Mr. Incredible, we need your help. Showtime. The final segment of this, should you go see this movie in theaters? Simple answer, yes. Do you like Mission Impossible movies? Yes. Then go see it in theaters. Do you like Top Gun Maverick? Yes. Okay, then go see this in theaters. But, I mean, yeah, that's a given. Did, did we expect a Mission Impossible movie with that? that is as big as this is and as important and as an important as it is to Tom Cruise and to Paramount, as it, do we expect it to be bad? No, it's a movie worth seeing. No, that, that's not a surprise to anybody. And if I'm being honest, that's not really the question that is being asked. The, the bigger question isn't, is this a movie worth seeing? But rather, is this a movie worth paying the cost of a theater ticket? Yes, it is. And not just because I love the theater experience. I'm a huge supporter of that. I have a membership to my local theater here because I go to the movie theater very frequently. It's one of my favorite places on the whole earth. I know not everybody feels the same way as me, but I do think that there's something special about that experience when it comes to movies, big blocks, buster, or not. Now that aside, not just because of that experience, not just because watching this on a bigger screen is sincerely better, not just because sharing that experience with strangers makes every movie better. Not just because Tom Cruise is literally risking his life to save cinemas. All of those reasons are very sincere and valid, but just disregard all that for a second, because here's the true kicker that really gives me confidence, more confidence than I've ever had in this segment, that yes, you should go see this in theaters, and here's the reason why. Nobody, and I mean nobody, likes watching a movie at home and constantly having to change the volume. One of the worst, I, I hate doing that. I, I know that I'm in agreement with everyone on earth. That is, that is so annoying watching a movie and it's distracting. And if you wait for Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 to come out on home theater release, which is going to be a while, uh, Tom Cruise, well, Paramount's strategy, not to get into the data too much, is is mixed, but Tom Cruise wants to keep this in theaters. IMAX screenings with Oppenheimer coming out is might mess that up. But we'll see. It's going to be longer than I think other films for Paramount have been. That being said, whenever you do watch it at home, if that's what you choose to do, you are going to constantly be on the volume knob, uh, the volume button, whatever it is you have. Your fingers are not going to leave it. Mission Impossible movies are loud. If you've seen one, you know that. The score, the sound effects, the action, that... It's loud, as it should be. They're booming, and it's great. It's one of the things that makes the movies what they are, and it's intentional. These editors and sound designers and directors know what they're doing. There's a reason for that. You feel physically, you feel those things, as you should. And the dialogue is mixed well so that you can hear it. When you need to hear the dialogue, you can hear it. It's clear audibly. You're not having to, like, really tune your ears to hear it. You, you can hear it very, very well. It's mixed well. It is a good sound mix in the cinema. And here's the reason why. At home, you're going to be going back and forth between dialogue and action, and sometimes really, really quickly. Mission Impossible films are fast. The pacing, this is a long movie, almost three hours long. You don't feel it because it is just breakneck speed in a good way, not like Rise of Skywalker, in a good way. So you go to the movie, And you can just let it be loud in the theater because you're there to enjoy it. You don't have to worry about disturbing anyone. So you let the action and the score be loud when the creators behind it intend it to be that way for a reason. And then you let the dialogue be reasonably loud at at an appropriate volume without feeling like you're being yelled at, without worried about it being loud at home. You're going to be constantly changing the volume at home because it's is loud. It's not because it is mixed poorly. It's not because you can't hear the dialogue. It's because the range between dialogue and and action sound effects and score 
is intentionally and dramatically different. And that does not pair well when you are at home worrying about waking other people up or being a disturbance or an annoyance to somebody else. So go to the movie theater. Let Lorne Balfe impress you with his orchestral punches. Let the sound effects allow you to feel every moment of the action sequence and every screech of the tire and the way that they rumble on cobblestone differently than they do on pavement. You allow yourself to, to, for the movie to be in your face by having it in your ears. You'll be doing yourself a disservice if you watch this at home because that audio experience will be interrupted by the constant need to change the volume. Unless you like totally live at home and you have no problem absolutely just blasting it because it's, I mean, things literally blow up. It's it's going to blow up. The sound really is. So go to the movie theater and let view it without concern, without restraint, because you don't want to interrupt the movie because you are at such an intense pace watching this film as you should be. So, yes, for that reason alone, in addition to all the others and also just the huge support I am of the movie theater experience, yes, you should see this in movie theaters. Absolutely, it is worth the watch. Cannot recommend it a month enough. I love Mission Impossible, and I really did enjoy Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. I'm grateful as well that Part 2 is coming next year. Between this and Across the Spider-Verse, we have had some intense endings. And I love that we have gotten to the point where if you're going to break up a Part 1, that that filmmakers have found a way to do this to broaden their ability to tell a story, not just to be a cash grab. I'm looking at you, Fast X, in the eyes. Fast X tried it and failed to get you to a point where when the movie ends, you feel that these characters have done the best in what they have. That they are at the point they are at because they could not have gotten to any other point or could not have gotten to the point they eventually will be at any sooner. Fast X just feels like everything's dragged out. Um, these characters in Mission Impossible and Across the Spider-Verse are doing their best against a force that is preventing them from moving faster. And that is used in a way to tell stories about characters that that we wouldn't experience if it was going faster. If the only point of Mission Impossible 7 or Across the Spider-Verse was to tell the entire story and to end perfectly with a period, we would miss out on some of the intensity emotionally that these longer stories bring. So anyway, that was a little tangent. I'm excited for next year. Excited also for the rest of the summer. So subscribe to The Basement Binge either on YouTube or wherever you currently listen to podcasts. I am in all of those places good things are coming. Oppenheimer review, Barbie review, other good things coming out this summer. And finally, finally, as my school semester comes to an end, I'll have a few months to get back to Animation Hall of Fave regularly and finish that because there's some great animated films that we need to review. They deserve our attention. I'm excited for that. So thank you for your patience here at The Basement Binge. Thank you for your support. If you'd like to support The Basement Binge financially, I feel uncomfortable asking this, but I'm going to say it linked below. I appreciate it. Your support is always very, very helpful. Subscribe once again. If you want to hear my thoughts about Indiana Jones, both the older films and the newest one, check out Matt Goes to the Movies wherever you get podcasts. I've been joining my friend Matt on his show as we reviewed the Indiana Jones films. That was a ton of fun. I realized I really love Indiana Jones. Well, I already knew that, but it was fun to talk about how much I love Indiana Jones. So Matt Goes to the Movies wherever you get podcasts, including also on YouTube. Anyway, if you haven't heard enough, this is The Basement Binge. My name is Harrison, and that's all for now. Ciao, ciao.